Hello everyone, my name is Ranger Elsie and I am so excited to be talking to you all today. I am standing in front of the gorgeous vista behind me in Shenandoah National Park and today we're going to be learning a little bit more about the world around us or I guess more like the world underneath us. Today we're going to be talking about the geology of Shenandoah National Park. Geology is everywhere. The rocks, the landforms we see, the very earth that we're standing on is geology. Some of you may have heard of the rock cycle before. The rock cycle is the changing of one type of a rock into another type of rock. And it's continuous, it never ends. Now, there are three types of rock. Now keep in mind, remember, this process has been going on since the beginning of Earth and will continue to happen throughout the rest of the history of Earth, throughout the end of time. Now, the three main types of rock are igneous rock, so think fire, think volcanoes. This rock is formed when the molten lava material cools and hardens and becomes solid. We also have sedimentary rock, which is formed from pieces of other rock that are pushed and smushed together. And then if you push and smush and add even more heat, that rock becomes metamorphic rock. Now, you know, here in Shenandoah, we actually have all three types of rock in our park at one time. Wow, which is pretty incredible. Okay, so that's a lot of fancy science words. And to get a better understanding of all of these kinds of rocks and the processes that uh, happen to them, let's go cook up some examples in the Shenandoah Geology Rock Kitchen. Hello everyone, welcome to our rock kitchen here at Shenandoah, where we use cooking ingredients, food, to learn all about different kinds of rocks and the geologic processes you can find right here in Shenandoah. Now, I have my rock recipe book right here with all of my personal favorite recipes. And another personal favorite I have with me right here is Ranger Miranda, my very, very good friend who's going to be helping me out today. Hello. Now, the best thing about all of these recipes is that you can do them at home to learn about these rocks too. Before you get started though, make sure you grab one of your favorite adults to help you out and help you keep safe. Now, we have all of our ingredients right here, but before we got started, both Ranger Miranda and I, we did wash our hands so we don't get any of those gross germs um, on anything that we're going to be eating later. So with that, let's get started. Let's get the ingredients. All right, so now we are going to make a sedimentary rock. So I have my recipe with me right here. And for ingredients, it just says sediment and glue. Mm. So sediment, hmm. So we're making a sedimentary rock. But what do you think sediment is? I've heard of it before. I think it's little pieces of rock like that have been broken down. Yeah, Miranda, you are so exactly right. So sediment is broken down pieces of rock. Now this rock could really be anything, right? Mm -hmm. So you can have sand be sediment, mud is sediment, pebbles, even bits of gravel. Now here in Rock Kitchen, we're not using real rocks, of course. <laughs> we are using cereal to represent all of our different kinds of sediment. So I have all of my favorite kinds of cereal right here. We have uh, Cocoa Puffs, we have Lucky Charms, Rice Krispies, and of course, delicious Cheerios and Captain Crunch. <laughs> so maybe those Rice Krispies are the sand, we have our pebbles, everything like that. But, so now we have all our sediment. Does this look like a rock? Not at all. It looks more just like a pile of sand that you're moving around. Yeah, you're right. So it's not sticking together. All of these pieces of sediment are still really s separate. But my recipe does say I need glue. Okay. So we need something to stick to these pieces together. And today I have some delicious marshmallow fluff. Now, in the real world, 
there isn't marshmallow fluff just oozing around everywhere, right? Sticking together our rocks. So in the natural world, this glue looks like a lot of different things, but I'm glad that we're using marshmallow fluff right now. So I'm just gonna pour some of this fluff out onto my sediment, my cereal. Looks very sticky. Ooh, yes, perfect. That's exactly <laughs> what I want. Stick, 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 stick. That Blue. still doesn't look like a rock, Ranger LC. Yeah, you're right. So now I have my glue and my sediment, but it's just kind of sitting there. If I shake it around, it's still not helping. Maybe I should check my recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we added our sediment, we added our glue, now I have to mix my ingredients together and gently squish them together. So hopefully that will make my rock look a little bit more like a rock. All right, here we go. Wow, we're really being chefs today. <laughs> Ooh, it is squishing. Ooh, I'm making a little bit of a mess here. It's starting to look like bigger pieces of rock, definitely. So it's sticking together. Some of those sediments are actually kind of squishing as well. Hmm. Elsie, is it okay if we just use our hands? Yeah, I think that maybe we should go for it. I think so too. All right. So I am going to make put the finishing touches on our sedimentary rock. Can I grab that spoon? Yeah. Thank you. So we can see exactly what you're doing in there. All right, so I'm just getting real, real in here. <laughs> and then gently squish it together. That looks like the tastiest rock I've ever seen. And here we go. So you can see <laughs> that it it is squishing together. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And you can still see the different kinds of sediment that make up this rock. So when you find a sedimentary rock like mm -hmm. sandstone, if you rub it, if you break it down a little bit, you can see the sediment that is making it up. Just like my cereal sedimentary rock right here. If I broke it apart, you could still see the different things. So you can find fossils in sedimentary rock. So like I can find the marshmallows in my Lucky Charms. So this, our sedimentary rocks, mm -hmm. they give scientists a great idea about what the earth looked like at that time that sedimentary rock was formed because it's kind of like a snapshot of the earth and what was on it at that time. Let's cool. go find a sedimentary rock in the park. I'm sitting in front of a sedimentary rock. So a sedimentary rock is formed by a lot of different sediments or material or rocks that have been glued together, bound together in a process that we call lithification, which is a very fancy geology word. Now you can tell this is a sedimentary rock because if you look closely, there are different types of rock that are stuck inside of it. Now, we call these clasts, which is another fancy geology word that really just means rock. Now, looking at these clasts, we can guess that they were pushed along the bottom of a river and weathered and eroded to become these little smaller pieces of rock that then eventually were glued into this bigger one. Now, we call this kind of sedimentary rock a conglomerate, which is the most fun out of all of the fancy geology words that I just said. Can you say it with me? Conglomerate. Great job. So looking at this conglomerate, you can also tell that it has gone through a little bit of that metamorphic process. It's not quite exactly just a pure sedimentary rock. It's starting to be smushed with that added heat and pressure, but it didn't quite get all the way there. And so we can still call this a beautiful sedimentary rock. Ooh, yummy chocolate rocks. Delicious. Don't eat them yet, Elsie. We have to make igneous rock. 
Oh man, <laughs> but they look so tasty, but I guess you're right. Okay, I'll look at my rock recipe. So for an Ignis rock, mm -hmm. it says that we need rocks. We got chocolate chips in this case. Then we need heat, heat, and more heat. Okay. Holy moly, that's three things of heat. <laughs> Whoa. And then just for directions, it says to apply all heat to rocks to make rock soup. Ooh, rock soup. Ooh, I know, sounds tasty, right? Mm -hmm. So that seems like a lot of heat, but we are making an igneous rock. So when I hear the word igneous, I think ignite, like fire, like starting a fire. And that's because we need a whole lot of heat to tr melt these solid rocks into liquid to make that rock soup, or what we call it magma in real life. So underneath the earth's surface, all of this heat is being applied to these rocks until they actually melt. Whoa. And after then we get our magma, a few things can happen to it. So either it's kind of like if you had a, your pot of soup on the stove and you took it off and then you shoved it in the freezer. So it can get really, really cold and then solidify again, kind of turn back from soup into a solid. Or the other thing that can happen is that it tries to escape from that pot. So if you've ever seen something boil over, that's kind of what uh, our rock soup can do or a magma can do. It looks for cracks in the earth's surface mm -hmm. and it can ooze and flow out. Or what is maybe a little bit more fun, it can explode or erupt. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> so just like a volcano, which is, is uh, one of the more explosive things that can happen to our magma. And once our magma touches mm -hmm. the air outside, we start calling it lava instead. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. So our igneous rock, it melts and then can, turns into magma, then eventually becomes lava. Whoa. Whoa. So unlike for our metamorphic rock, mm -hmm. I don't think that we can make enough heat with our hands to be able to turn these chocolate chips into melted chocolate or a rock soup. So if you are following along with us at home, this is the time that you grab your adults because we need some extra help to be able to melt all of these chocolate rocks. So we're about to go and zap them in the microwave and we'll be right back with you. All right, and now we have our beautiful magma. You can see it's all like nice and rock soupy. Yeesh, there we go. So, Here in Shenandoah, like I said before, we didn't have those explosive volcanoes. Our volcanoes were oozing, like that spaghetti sauce, right, that you can think of. So slowly through cracks, our magma was just being oozing kind of down. It was flowing out of the earth and across the landscape. That's a pretty slow ooze. It's a very slow ooze. <laughs> So we didn't have, like I said, those crazy big volcanoes like Mount St. Helens, but we did have a lot of volcanic activity and over a long period of time too. So these, this flow, it didn't just happen one time. Over and over and over again, these layers, these lava flows were building up on top of each other to create the landscape. Should we do one more lava flow? Yeah. Whoa. This is a big one. So eventually, all of this lava, it cooled down into the igneous rock that you can still find in the park. When that lava after it has flowed out, it slowly, slowly cools and reforms into the solid rock that we can walk on today, just like here. So you can see when I hit this, it's no longer that oozy spaghetti sauce kind of consistency. Instead, this is solid, solid chocolate, solid, solid rock. So I am sitting on what we call igneous rock. Now this is a, called a metabasalt. So igneous rock, think ignite, think fire. This rock was formed by molten lava. 
So magma underneath the earth kind of bubbled up. Think of a boiling tomato sauce or spaghetti sauce, right? Sometimes it pops and it splatters everywhere. We had uh, splatter cones essentially, or it kind of oozed out. And then when that lava, it cooled, it formed this igneous rock. Now, what I'm sitting on is really called columnar jointing because when the lava, when it dried, it kind of cracked and became this amazing rock formation that we can see here today. So today we are going to be making a metamorphic rock. Looking at my metamorphic rock recipe, it says for ingredients I need rocks, heat, and pressure. So as this is rock kitchen, I didn't want to use real rocks. So instead I have something a little bit more tasty. So I have some different colors of airheads right here. Now I thought that the different colors of airheads, mm -hmm. they could represent different rock layers that have been oh. deposited or put down, laid down and stacked on top of each other over time. Okay. But it says to make a metamorphic rock, I also need heat and pressure. Mm -hmm. And then all my directions say is to apply that heat and or pressure. So Miranda, can you help me? What do, yeah, you, think, what do sure. you think that means? Well, it looks like you have a really good start by laying down these awesome ro rock layers. Now we need to metamorphose them. Metamorphose is another word for change. So, ooh, these smell really nice. <laughs> so we are going to, we have a little way. What did you say we needed to change them? So my recipe says that we need heat and pressure. Okay. So a way to produce heat, a really easy way, is to get your hands and just rub them together. Rub them really fast and you'll start to feel your hands getting hotter and hotter. Mm, yeah. And when you feel them hot enough, go ahead and grab your rock layers. Okay. And you are going to apply pressure with your hands. Ooh, good thing I'm really muscly. Yes, good thing. Use all your muscles. Now, you can reheat up your hands again Ooh. if you want to, to get some more heat. Wow, look at this. Oh, I can really see all of these layers smushing together. Holy and, moly. Yeah, and it's starting to look like a metamorphic rock. A lot of times in real life, when we go out and see them, they are, they just look like they've been just twisted and contorted. Yeesh. And that's exactly what's going on. Now, most of the time, almost all of the time, you won't find rocks being metamorphosed at the surface. They need to be metamorphosed deep down below where there's enough heat and enough pressure in order to change them. Keep in mind, that is not liquid. It's not liquid like water. It didn't get enough heat in order to make it into a rock soup, but it got enough to really make it look into, really make it look differently. Wow, so this is from all of those different layers of rock. I just have one big rock now. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna eat that all in one bite? Ooh, do you think I can? I think you probably could, but it might give you a stomach ache. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll just leave our metamorphic rock the way it is now, but let's go see an example in the park. Good idea. And this is an example of metamorphic rock that you can find right here in our park. Do you see this lovely green rock right here? And there's actually some pink. This is called unikite. And a fun way to remember that is that it's kind of a combination between a unicorn and a kite. Probably not something you see every day. Unikite was formed by hydrothermal activity. Now hydro means water and thermal means hot. So think of the hottest water that you possibly can seeping through this rock and some of it turned into unikite. And around it, where that hot water didn't quite get to, it's still the granite that you can find elsewhere in the park. Unikite is one of my favorites because it is so pretty, right? We see this example of the green, we can see this pink, it can even be blue. So this was a lot of heat that was transforming our rock into a metamorphic rock. So now we have those basic building blocks of geology. Let's start using them to create some of the landforms that we see today. 
Now, when you're building a Jenga tower, or maybe a delicious cake, where do you start? Do you start at the top? No, you have to start at the bottom, right? And then build up the rest of the layers of this cake or your mountain. Now, it's the same thing with geology. As these rocks are put down or deposited, newer layers are then laid on top of them to build up the incredible mountains that we have here today. Now, each one of those layers is kind of like a different flavor made of different materials. So maybe this layer is, it's a purple layer, right? So maybe it's grape. And then we have ooh, blueberry, perhaps, lime. So the different geologic layers are very similar. They tell a different story of the earth at this time. Even though the earth doesn't seem to change very quickly, I haven't gone to sleep one morning and woken up with a new mountain range in my backyard. Geology is constantly changing and reshaping the environment everywhere you go. So today, let's explore the basics of geology and see how they created the Shenandoah National Park that we see here today. So to recreate how our mountains here in Shenandoah formed, we are going to experiment a little bit with those tectonic plates that I mentioned earlier. So even though I might be very strong, I can't move entire tectonic plates. I can't move the entire earth. So instead, we're going to be using graham cracker tectonic plates and they are floating on this delicious marshmallow magma. So our mountains formed because of a convergent plate boundary. So our two plates push together and one went on top of the other because one of these plates was heavier and so it sunk. And you can see here, right, all of this magma, which then we would call lava, rose up out of the surface and created these mountains. So right here is a great example of erosion and actually weathering. So remember erosion is picking up that material, picking up those rocks, that sediment, and moving it somewhere else. So right here is actually an active rockfall, which is erosion, right? You can see all of these big rocks are being pulled by gravity down the mountain. So eventually they won't be here anymore. They'll be all the way down at the bottom. Now, when these rocks, they're going to be tumbling down, they're also going to be weathered by all of that force, right? You can imagine, remember weathering is that breaking down of the rock into smaller bits of rock. So I bet that when this rock it rolls down that hill, it's going to be slowly broken down into smaller and smaller pieces of rock. So right here, all of this sediment is going to be eroded as it tumbles down the mountain and also weathered along the way. All right, my friends. So do you remember weathering, right? It's that breaking down of that rock into smaller and smaller pieces. And I am standing next to an excellent example of weathering. Do you see what is weathering this rock right here? It's this tree, right? It's incredible. So this tree is actually growing in between the, this rock and cracking it apart, prying it further and further apart until it's becoming two rocks instead of one. So this is a great example of how living things can also weather a rock. So weathering can be done by trees, it can be done by water, it can be done by ice. But this is just one example that you can see while you're out hiking of weathering in action. So thank you for joining me on our geologic journey today. We've learned so much about the awesome rocks of Shenandoah National Park. So after learning everything that we have, do you think that Shenandoah is going to look the same in a million years? In a thousand years? In a hundred years? What about tomorrow? No. So all of the processes that we talked about, they might seem like they take a very, very long time. But Shenandoah and the earth is constantly changing. And so the park that you come and visit 
is not going to be the same one that we explore today in this video, but it is still going to be a Shenandoah that we love very, very dearly and need to take care of. So I hope to see you all in the park very, very soon. Bye everyone.